So in this video, I am going to explain how the Add Force node works in Unreal Engine. So like in the previous video, I am using the third person project template to demo how this works. So if I were to try running this project, you can see we have our character over here. And if I press the E key in my keyboard, you can see it spawns a cube in front of my character. So the character over here is spawning the cube based on the forward vector of my character. So once again, when I press the E key, it will spawn the cube. And inside the cube, there is a begin play, which has a timeline node connected to the add force node. And that creates this force over here. So to quickly explain once again what's going on over here, in my character blueprint over here, I have the keyboard event E over here. And when I press it, we will call this function over here called spawn some object, where we basically get the forward vector of our character and then multiply it by a certain value so that the cube gets spawned at a certain distance away from our character. And this new transform over here will be passed over here to the spawn transform in the spawn actor node over here. And inside the class, we have the BP cube object, which is the cube that we are using to spawn our objects. And in the event graph, we have the event begin play over here. And over here, we are using the get forward vector, which basically gets the forward vector of our cube over here. And then we store that location in this variable called player forward vector. And from there, we call this timeline node over here, which is a very simple timeline with a length of one second. Alright, so in the update pin over here, it will call the add force node over here for one second continuously. And this is very important in the case of the add force node because unlike in the previous node which was the add impulse node where you only need a single tick for the object to move in the case of the add force node over here the tick information over here should be given out continuously for the add force node over here to work and because of that we often use the add force node over here along with a timeline node again we have two very important input pins over here one is the target where you can choose a target component to actually apply the add force into and the force vector over here. So once again over here, we are using the player forward vector and then multiplying this by a large number for the add force node to work. And this is again very similar to what I have already explained in the case of the add impulse node where this is part of the physics system. And because of that, things like the mass of your object is very important. If the mass of your object is very high, the amount of force that you need to apply to move that object is greater. And similarly, if the object has less mass, then you need less force to move it. So in this case, if I were to go to the viewport and select the cube static mesh, Unreal Engine is determining our mass of our object based on our scaled value over here. So this is what determines the mass of your object. So if I were to increase, the mass of our object by increasing the scale of it by one in all axis and try running this once again. Notice how slow the cube is going to move. The cube barely moves a bit and that is because the mass of our object is even greater and you can actually bypass this issue of having to set a scale by actually selecting a mass for your object. So by default it might be something like a hundred you can actually reduce the mass of your object by giving this a smaller value. So if I were to give a value of 30 over here on our mass and try running this again, despite the scale value of our cube being higher, our cube is still moving a lot faster. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.